What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Wednesday, and welcome to this week's collection review. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, uh, and we're going to be jumping into an awesome little collection uh, of, a, of a Watch Geek's grandfather. And since most of you know I kind of have a lot of grandpa style, I think this is going to be a fun episode. So let's get into it. So before we get started, a quick wristwatch check. I am wearing a Rolex Datejust reference 1601 uh, with a beautiful wide boy dial and matching hands. This is a rare configuration of one of my favorite watches, or probably my favorite watch in the world. Uh, definitely my favorite vintage watch. It was a pleasure to source it, certainly, and it's a pleasure to wear it right now. So, let's get into the episode. Okay, so I received an email a couple of weeks ago. It was a, re a collection review request uh, at info at theoandharris.com, which you should all definitely send your collections to, so I can review. But the email is actually not signed by the person who sent it, so their pen name, I believe, is Eastwood. So this is, this is a review uh, for Eastwood's grandfather. So let's get into what he has, uh, uh, what I think about the watches, and then what I think would be a logical progression of that collection. Okay, so first off, we have a Rolex reference 16030, I believe, uh, with a beautiful silver dial. Next, we have a Tudor Prince Oyster Date, 34mm uh, watch, smooth bezel, crazy dial. We'll get into that in a little while. A little old Rolex uh, Oyster Precision, an Omega Dynamic Geneve, an Omega Speedmaster, and finally, a vintage Omega Seamaster with a beautiful waffle dial. Okay, so let's start with the obvious here. This is a Rolex and Omega collection. Further, it's an affordable, quote unquote, uh, to the relative market, a uh, Rolex and Omega collection. This is really where I like to play. These are some of my favorite watches. I love uh, the kind of kind of entry-level Omega Rolex worlds. I think there's a ton of value. I think that these watches are not uh, worse than their more expensive brothers and sisters, rather just less desirable or less recognized by the mass market. They've created this like insulated sub-market where 34 millimeter tutors are only worth two grand, not three or four or five, uh, where a date just is only worth three or four as opposed to six or seven or eight, which would be logical considering the, the value of, like I said, the brothers and sisters throughout the Rolex line specifically. So I will tell you this, Eastwood, uh, your grandfather not only has great taste, uh, but really has a wonderful understanding of value, uh, which to me is obviously that's where I live and breathe all the watches that I deal with uh, at theoandharris.com on the watch shop represent value. That's my thing. Uh, I like buying a $12 bottle of wine that drinks like a $24 bottle of wine. I like wearing a $1,000 watch uh, that really should probably cost $1,600, uh, but just hasn't been realized at that price point yet. That's what I love to do. So this collection is right up my alley. So now let's jump into the specific watches a little bit. Let's start off with the Rolex Datejust. It's a quick set model, not something that I'm usually uh, used to working with. Uh, I usually deal in the more vintage, the, the 1601 models, but there is no denying the value and the convenience of a quick set Datejust. Uh, further than that, I mean, you can absolutely tell this watch was super well maintained by your grandfather. He has obvious deep rooted respect uh, for all of his watches, including this Datejust, which is something that I love to see. A Rolex Datejust is a very serious watch. It's a watch that uh, I think deserves to be cherished, like all material items, but specifically this, uh, deserves to be cherished. And uh, your grandfather uh, has done so, and I have you know, major respect for someone who uh, buys something and takes care of it, so props. Next you have this little old Precision, which is a super interesting, beautiful watch. Uh, it has a lot less beef than the date chest. It probably is more of a dress watch, uh, typically, but, uh, but I love the strap you've put it on. I think it's super interesting. This is a watch that will never go out of style. It's something that I am comfortable wearing. I think the millimeters are probably, what, 33 or 34, uh, but I can understand how most people would not be. But still, uh, I maintain my, you know, my uh, passion for smaller watches, uh, particularly by my favorite brand, Rolex. Next, we have a very cool Omega Geneve Dynamic with the blue dial and amazing custard pertaining to the hour indices. This is an oddball watch. This is not a watch I see very often, uh, and I'm a, I'm a big, big fan of it. Next, the Speedmaster Professional, which is a watch that almost doesn't seem like it fits in this collection because your grandfather obviously leans more towards smaller, um, you know, more kind of refined dress watches. Uh, but I do think it's interesting that he chose the Speedy, uh, maybe as opposed to a Sub. That may have made a little bit more sense to me. But obviously, even though I'm not a big Speedmaster fan, it's a wonderful watch that although maybe it doesn't make sense contextually to me on the surface as to its existence in the collection, but still, it's a watch that has stood the test of time without question. Like your grandfather's passion for watches, which has been passed down to you, the Speedmaster uh, has 
maintained or, or remained so true to itself. Uh, it's a little bit of an obscure parallel, but I think that the integrity of both these things, the passion and the watch, uh, have remained. And that's, that's kind of a funny thing. Uh, and kind of unchanged. Anyway, moving on to the Seamaster. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, waffle dials are incredibly valuable. Uh, waffled waffle dials are some of the most coveted dials in the watch world, and in the Omega world particularly. So uh, maybe you didn't know this, but you've got quite a rare and desirable uh, you know, example in this little collection. Okay, so we've seen the collection. Uh, we see what your grandfather has, uh, and we obviously know that you're, you're very passionate about these watches. Uh, and I have three recommendations for you. One, I'd like you to source an original secondhand for your Omega Genève Dynamic. Uh, the one on it, I am 99% sure, is an aftermarket. I've never seen uh, one like it. Uh, typically, every time I've seen them, the Omega Dynamics have second hands that are almost like a sword. Uh, they have a flat bottom, and they get wide, and they go very thin, uh, which is a very iconic kind of second hand. This will not be a very expensive venture, uh, but I think it will uh, it'll just kind of you know give you something to do and beef up your collection a little bit, and although it's just a little detail, I think it does mean a lot. Uh, if you need my help with that, I'd be more than happy to try. Uh, I'm not sure how quickly I can find that hand, but who knows. Uh, otherwise, uh, do it on your own uh, and look for it. I think that you'll be happy in retrospect uh, if you take my advice on that. Next, try to have some fun with straps. The Datejust you have there is one of the most ultimately versatile watches ever. Uh, the Jubilee bracelet is beautiful, but don't be afraid to play around with calf, crocodile, ostrich, you know, lizard, God knows what. Uh, you can have so much fun with custom straps or with anything. Uh, they're not enormous investments, anywhere from $100 to $300, uh, obviously. At 300 they're getting a lot more expensive, but still, uh, I think that they will rejuvenate your grandfather's watches uh, and make them, even more importantly, your own a little bit. You know, your grandfather's watch on the Jubilee is your grandfather's watch, but your grandfather's watch on, you know, a watch strap from the Theo Harris watch strap, for example, self-promotion plug, I'm shameless, uh, would be, you know, your grandfather's watch with, with your kind of like addition or your decision. Uh, but there are so many other places to get straps, you don't have to buy from us, I'm just kind of, you know, speaking anecdotally here. Uh, I think that, that would really make it more personal uh, and, and, and kind of merge your grandfather's passion, you know, with, with or, or make it evolve. A little bit. I love that. And then finally, my one watch recommendation that you might want to add to this collection or advise that your grandfather might would be an Omega Chronograph, uh, a Seamaster with a 321 movement. These are some of my favorite watches in the world. Uh, they're Lamania based. They're based off of, you know, the most venerable and probably well-respected movement in the world, uh, based off of the same movement inside the Patek Philippe 5070, which is something people don't usually realize. I mean, it's the Moonwatch movement. Uh, further than that, it although powered by the same you know, movement as a Speedmaster, couldn't be more different. Uh, it's an ultimate refined watch. There are so many little details that you can go into them, whether that's stick hands, alpha hands, certain kinds of dials and, and all that. Uh, it's a watch that, in my opinion, although has kind of risen in price in the last year and a half or two years, still is at a fair price, if not slightly below market. So I, I do recommend you pick one up. Uh, these are incredible, incredible watches that I absolutely wish that I owned myself. So that's it. Thank you so much for sending me your grandfather's collection, Eastwood. Uh, it was a, such a pleasure, you know, looking at a collection that has uh, been building over the course of a lot, a lot of years, as opposed to something that just happened over the course of the last year. Uh, to me, it shows so much thought uh, and it represents passion. You know, a long developing journey of passion. And I love that. And I love that you're talking about it now. You know, I think your grandfather is probably very, very proud of that. That's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's collection review. Do not forget to check out the watches in the watch shop at theoandharris.com right now.